if we deliver no effect at the end of this operation other than some protection to those who deserve some respite from the hardship that they suffer, that is success. So yeah, so I'm uh, W1 RSM Corbett, uh, and I'm the Long Range Reconnaissance Group uh, Rising Metal Sergeant Major. So the Long Range Reconnaissance Group uh, in Mali uh, provides a very unique uh, and niche capability um, with um, our ability to get ourselves onto the ground for long periods of time um, and, and achieving effects over uh, significant distances, but it also does provide us a, a great uh, learning and operating opportunity uh, for our boys and girls. Um, you're crossing the unique uh, terrain that we're operating in here uh, from, a, from a light protective mobility point of view. You know, our drivers um, uh, and commanders' skill sets as regards to sort of navigation and, and, and micro-terrain use and utilising the vehicle platforms, um, you know, it'll absolutely be worth its weight in gold from, from that point of view as well. Hello, my name is Captain uh, Terry Dinsmore. Uh, I'm the company's second in command of the Light Mechanised Infantry Company, uh, deployed on UN peacekeeping operations as part of uh, Up Newcomb Rotation 4 uh, here in Mali. So my role within the Light Mechanised uh, Infantry Company, or, or LMI, um, is to be a support not only to the officer commanding the company um, in order to train that company prior to deployment, but here on operations, I will assist in the planning process prior to, to the actual deployment uh, on the ground, uh, and indeed will support him with intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance uh, as the, the lead of the ISR group um, and enable the, the company to head out the door uh, briefed to the standard that they need uh, and then to enable them whilst on the ground with that intelligence and communications here uh, back to task at PHQ. We in the UK have you know, such good training resources but they are limited by, the, by their size. Coming to Mali it's just a, it's a different story. The area that we operate in is not only massive but it is free of a lot of urban areas um, and is quite sparingly populated. It's a really interesting glimpse into just every, the everyday life of the, um, of the people here in Mali. Uh, and it's just, it's fascinating to see them. Um, when we went out, to, uh, went, went out to a local range just to conduct a you know, basic shoot for ourselves, to get ourselves ready going forward for our later patrols, uh, we got to meet some local children and some, and some local nationals um, and get chatting to them and, and just learn about what they want from us. Uh, and what they always talk about is is that security, um, and they're happy to see us there. Yeah, so I'm Lance Corporal Woodall. Uh, I'm part of the advanced search team, and I provide the dog capability. So my main role is, uh, like I said, uh, handling the dog uh, and any search tasks that come up, uh, I'm there to assist. My dog is a uh, Belgian Malinois and he's called Boris. So Boris arrived uh, about three weeks before me uh, just to start that acclimatisation process um, and hit the ground running. So when I uh, landed, I could just pick him up and then we could start. Um, so, so Boris is a high assurance search dog and what that means is um, he's looking for tiny trace amounts of explosives and component parts of making up the IDs. So the biggest challenge I think is just going to be keeping him ticking over and keeping him out of the heat as best as, as best I can. Uh, there's not a lot of shade out there um, and yeah just yeah be trying to manage him the, the, the best I can. He yeah so he's done coming up four weeks I've done just over two weeks uh, and yeah he's adapting great so th that means short walks uh, first thing in the morning last thing at night avoiding the middle of the day and just trying to get him uh, best used to, to the heat. So the thing I'm most looking forward to is just see, seeing what he can do. Uh, he, he's an incredible dog um, and he surprises me every day. I'm just, I just want to see how far we, we can push it and just see what, uh, what things he can do. So LAD stands for Light Aid Detachment and it's essentially a group of people that are here to support the operations, enabling the troops to be on the ground at all times with all their kit that uh, is required. So with the wagons going such long distances, they're going to be extremely tired. It's going to be very demanding to get them back in the game once they start breaking. But we're more than enough equipped with the tools and spares that we carry to enable us to go those for long distances. 
So a common fault out here is overheating a lot. Uh, so inside foxhounds, I think it sits about 60 degrees. It's, it's cooler on the outside than it is on the inside. Uh, we can uh, conduct battlefield repairs. So if a CV boot breaks and we don't have the spare to repair that, we'll use easy gasket um, to seal it back up, which will enable it to get back to Camp Bagnall, where we will be able to fix it fully. You, we learn techniques like this from prior rotos and the more experienced Remy people amongst us passing down the knowledge and information to help us conduct the operations. I'm most excited to see how people in Africa lives differ so much more than ours in the Western world. It's just a, a different experience. Just see how other people live and try and help them as best as we can. Uh, so I'm Lieutenant Laura Weatherly. Uh, and I'm responsible for the EAD and Search Task Line supporting on Newcomb. So the EAD and Search Task Line uh, is basically here to kind of counter the explosive threat um, in a whole range of ways. So in some cases that looks like us providing high assurance search, uh, particularly in areas where the task group might be quite vulnerable to IED attack. Uh, it might look like the operator going down the road to deal with sort of very advanced IED, um, or even just look like providing extra training, support, uh, and specialist advice during planning cycles back here uh, in Camp Bagnall. Uh, so we've got a whole range of experience down in the task line. So it's my first deployment uh, and the same for quite a few of our sappers. Uh, going all the way up to the operator um, who's had a lot of experience uh, on Herrick and other operations since then. So we've got a real range uh, and a lot of the guys for whom it's the first time going away. Uh, we've all already learnt a lot, only been here a few weeks uh, and we're learning a lot from the more experienced members of the task line as well. I think it's exciting. Um, I think everyone's had a good time getting here, getting in among sort of kit and equipment, and we've already had the, you know, our first sort of run out doing everyone's first live search in theatre. Uh, just excited to have a chance to go out, see some more of the country, uh, and just be held there at readiness to support um, the task group in any way that they, they need us to. EOD and search, for all of us, the first priority is always about preserving human life, um, and that doesn't just refer to the task group itself. Uh, so in theatre there's a policy, if we have any fines of any explosive ordnance, um, we will deal with them and that in turn helps protect civilian population. And there's a lot of unexploded ordnance in and around Mali, so kind of uh, munitions which have been left behind from kind of previous conflicts and the same a lot of IEDs which aren't maybe targeting our forces um, but targeting others in the area which in turn um, poses a threat to civilians. Uh, so one of our roles as the EOD and Search Task Line, when we're moving on these patrols around the country, if we have any fines, um, then we're able to come forward and deal with them, and that in turn kind of adds that extra layer of security um, for civilians, particularly in those kind of really rural areas where there's not going to be kind of an NGO presence who might be able to do that otherwise. My name is uh, Major Nicholas Taylor. I am officer commanding a B Squadron, the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards. We as a squadron uh, have deployed on Operation Newcomb 4 as our primary function is the find and the understand. Uh, inevitably, this will see us being able to operate at long range. Uh, and this is primarily uh, due to uh, the platform in which the squadron operates uh, and our ability to live off our vehicles for long periods of time. In preparation for our deployment, saw six months of arduous training to ensure that when we do deploy, we are prepared appropriately for any challenges that are presented to us, whether that's the climatic and environmental challenges uh, and the engagement uh, with uh, local civilians, uh, which has meant that we have not only been able to uh, learn uh, languages uh, and dialects uh, within the country itself, but also understand how we need to operate in what can only be described as an austere environment. Having deployed on Operation Newcomb is an absolutely huge privilege uh, to be able to be in this position and providing genuine effect to the local population of Mali. But we are in a, a fantastic position to be able to provide experience to the most junior, to understand the capabilities of light cavalry, engagement uh, with local nationals and provide genuine effect to those people that have been affected by adversaries' movements uh, across our area of operations. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Rob Salomon. I'm a general and vascular surgeon, and I'm the clinical director for the uh, Ground Maneuver Surgical Group on Ot Newcomb. 
The Ground Maneuver Surgical Group is a team of 17 people with all their kit and equipment who can provide damage control surgery to the soldiers on the ground uh, as part of the Manisma uh, peacekeeping force um, in Op Nucum 4. The type of care we give is you could regard equivalent to most trauma centres in NHS hospitals in the UK. In fact, the team we have with us at the moment are mostly uh, reservists. So we're full-time NHS workers, uh, doctors, nurses, uh, operating practitioners um, who as Army reservists have uh, been mobilised and are now working here full-time with the regular soldiers providing the care. So the quality and the intensity of the care we give is what you would expect from a UK trauma centre. We have an extremely experienced clinical team. Uh, the uh, five consultants who, uh, who are working here, the two surgeons, two anaesthetists and emergency medicine doctor, are extremely experienced in what we do. Uh, we do this sort of thing in the NHS all the time and have done for our working lives. The slight difference here is that we don't have uh, a lot of junior doctors or junior nurses uh, to help us. The upshot of that is, as soon as an injured person or someone with a serious illness comes here, the consultant's there straight away at the bedside sorting things out from second one. Um, it makes uh, treatment extremely slick, extremely quick and I believe as good if not better than uh, most, uh, most hospitals can manage at home.